Hey guys, welcome to the demonstration and overview portion of my March watercolor snacks unboxing video. To check out the unboxing itself, please go ahead and click this card here. If you are not familiar with Art Snacks or Watercolor Snacks, Art Snacks is a monthly art subscription box. Some months are better than others, and Watercolor Snacks is an off branch of that. So we've got the menu for the snacks right here, as well as the snacks inside the box. Let's go ahead and get started. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Becca Hilburn. I'm a watercolor artist and comic artist, and I do kid lit comics. And I have reviewed dozens of watercolor brands here on the channel and over at natosoup.blogspot.com. If you're interested in seeing my credentials, I have an MFA from SCAD, the College of Creative Careers, which is one of the big art schools here in the US. And I have been painting with watercolor for seven years. I bought the Art Snacks watercolor box because I love watercolor. I like reviewing art supplies and I have had a tumultuous relationship with Art Snacks. This box came almost a month late because they'd separated my shipping information from my payment information and didn't think to double check. I had to get on them and they finally sent me the box. Without much more of an ado, let's go ahead and get crunching of the numbers. So inside our box, we've got the core modern watercolors. They say $34.99. We've got the Winsor & Newton classic watercolor pad. They say $15.34. We've got three Princeton velvet touched brushes, a four round, a eight round, an angle shader, three eighths, and the combined retail for that is $32.15. And we've got their brand, a Plumchester P4 Fine Liner for $2.99. We also have access to the Jess Angle, AKA Studio Jess watercolor tutorials, which are not gonna be useful for me because I know how to watercolor and it is a very watercolor basics tutorial series. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up some numbers and we'll talk turkey. Okay guys, I've done a little number crunching and I wanna talk about those numbers before we start playing with our watercolors. So um, I crunched the values for what Art Snacks said these things were worth, which is probably the MSRP versus one of my favorite art supply stores, Dick Blick. And you can find Blick at Blick.com. And I love buying my art supplies from Blick and they are absolutely not a sponsor. I just think they have some of the best prices around. So uh, keep that with a grain of salt. I know people have had a problem in some of my past unboxings where I use Blick and Amazon for my prices. I'm an artist and I like to shop smart. I don't like to spend too much money because I don't get paid too much money. So we're gonna start with the core modern watercolors. Now, these are five milliliter tubes and we get six of them. And this is the high chroma set. So this is a bunch of the synthetic colors. Now core has an introductory color set with six colors, which might be a better fit for you if you are not an experienced watercolor artist because those are gonna be colors designed for mixing. These are not colors designed for mixing. So they may be a bit of a challenge if you're looking to do traditional watercolor techniques or do traditional mixes. And my good friend Heidi Black actually recorded a wonderful demonstration video using these high chroma watercolors to paint this illustration. And one of the things Heidi said is that these were incredibly hard to mix. So that's gonna be fun when I do my challenge. Anyway, Art Snack says they are $34.99. I found them for $29.99 at Blick. The Windsor and Newton, let me move a few things watercolor pad. This is a cellulose watercolor pad. Cellulose tends to be student grade, although not always. Many professional artists do prefer cotton rag. It has better absorbency and doesn't buckle quite as much. This is their cold press finish and it came in a full size nine inch by 12 inch pad. 140 pound paper. This is not the heaviest paper on the market. That would be 300 pound paper and that's not hard to find at all. So Art Snack says this pad is worth $15.35. I found it for $11.98 at blick.com. And if you're wondering, if you want to see proof of all my prices, you can check the description below. I have provided links. Next up are these synthetic velvet touch brushes. Now synthetic brushes don't really impress me and overpaying for synthetic brushes really doesn't impress me because synthetic brushes are pretty much made of the same two materials, either golden taclon or white taclon. Both of them are nylon fibers and you really shouldn't use them with alcohol markers. It will eat your markers. Um, so 
you know, there's not a lot of uh, <laughs> expense innovation going on with synthetic brushes. So Art Snack said the combined va value for the round number four, the long round number eight, and the angled shader three eighths inch is doo -doo -doo -doo, 32 15. I found them on Dick Blick for 712, 387, and 507, making that total 1606. Now, the Plum Chester Fineliner, Plum Chester is an Art Snacks brand, and um, they really don't feel like reinventing the wheel too much because all of their Plum Chester products are kind of dupes for existing products. This is very similar to a Sakura Micron, and a little later on in the video, I'll talk about great dupes or great replacements for the set, just like I did with the Art Snacks Inktober box, because I am that jerk. This is a 0.4. So as you guys can see, it's a technical pin with a metal sheath. And this is really similar to the Sakura Micron. So um, I have to take their word on the value for this. And they claim that it is 299. However, Microns go for 223 at Dick Blick. And I'm more familiar with Microns. These are both pigment based waterproof, alcohol marker proof pins. So I would probably go with the Microns because I know how they handle and I can get them very easily. Um, and then finally, we have a tutorial by Jess Engel, who is a watercolor artist who has done watercolor tutorials. And I will link right here to her channel so you guys can check. Well, actually I'll link in the description below because I can't link in my cards to other channels, I don't think. I'll link to her channel so you guys can go and check that out. She is a professional artist and they value her tut tutorial at $15. Um, the internet, the YouTubes are full of wonderful, phenomenal watercolor artists who do wonderful, phenomenal watercolor tutorials available at a variety of price points, most of which are free, 99. So um, I don't want to demean her work, but I am saying there are alternatives. So the Art Snacks total, if you go by all the prices, was 148. The actual value, and this is including Jess Ingalls' tutorial, is $16.26, and I paid $89 for three months. I got the spring box, which came a month late. As a YouTuber, that makes it almost worthless. As a watercolorist, it's worth approximately 16, I mean, 66.26, AKA the Dick Blick value plus Je uh, Jess Ingalls tutorials. Now for me as a watercolor artist, I'm a little bit beyond what Jess does or what her tutorials are showing. So for me, that doesn't have a lot of intrinsic value. Unfortunately, I'm kind of disappointed. I was hoping there would be a more traditional watercolor artist doing tutorials for them. Um, I backed before I knew who the artist was before they'd announced the artist. So, you know, you live and you learn and I won't be backing the next box. So um, this was calculating, um, this was cal this number, this total was calculated, um, assuming that the Jess Ingle tutorials have a unique value and are not comparable to any of the watercolor tutorials that are available online at various price points. So we're going to do some demonstration and then I'm going to talk about some dupes or re uh, replacements, alternatives, and the materials included in this box. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed myself a glass of clean water while Heidi was demonstrating my watercolor snacks. She cut the paper for me into a little more manageable size. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Heidi. So we are going to start by swatching our six colors. So the core high chrome watercolor set comes in a metal box. I have used core watercolors in the past. I really like them. They are indeed high quality watercolors. And like I said in my unboxing, instead of using gum Arabic, which yellows, um, it, they use Aquazole, which is kind of something unique to this company. And it allows the blues to truly be blue. So core watercolors are actually very high quality, nice watercolors. And this is a nice little set. It's actually in a smaller form factor. I own this set already. So the remaining of this is going to go over to my friend Kabocha um, rather than keeping duplicates around my studio for absolutely no reason. Um, I do like the smaller form factor though so I may keep the box and send the paints. Um, inside are some little wells depending on how you paint these can be really helpful as well as an information booklet. 
And uh, deep, rich, beautiful color cores. Exclusive binder gives color greater intensity and clarity while retaining the best qualities of traditional watercolors. Core offers a strength, range, and versatility unmatched in the history of watercolors. I really like to know what Aquazol is made up of. And then we have a beautiful swatch sheet of the colors in the core range. And it's not a huge range, but it's a pretty uh, comprehensive one. And these are made by Golden. And when I was in undergrad, I painted with Golden acrylics because that is what Michael sold and I did not have a ride anywhere else. So I'm going to do a dot swatch. And then I may do a mass tone swatch. And since it's already kind of oozing out, I'm gonna go ahead and actually prepare a dot card since I promised Heidi I would send a dot card. So I'll put that over to the side so y'all don't have to see that. I don't like to waste watercolor, it gets expensive. So that is quinacridone gold. And with most tube watercolors, there's gonna be some slight differences between fresh from the tube watercolor and watercolor that's been allowed to dry in a pan. And I don't have any experience with core as pan watercolors, unfortunately. Maybe this could be an opportunity for that because that's actually really important. Some brands work better than others. So that was transparent pyrrole orange. Now we're doing Quinn magenta. And um, most of the colors, if not all of the colors in this set are synthetics. So a lot of quinacridones, a lot of really bright, intense colors, which are beautiful, but they don't make for good mixing colors. And it is, um, it really makes me wonder who the target audience for this box is, unless it's YouTubers, because um, you just, you know, a high chroma set is an interesting choice for beginner watercolors or people who would be learning from tutorials. And I have a feeling the Jess Engle tutorials are not going to involve much color mixing. I have not actually fully checked it out. I've seen clips and I've checked out her channel and I've also checked out her art. So I got Quinn Magenta just about all over me. And you guys can see it's staining. These synthetic colors do tend to have high staining properties because they tend to not be granulating colors. Colors that granulate tend not to stain the paper. Di Dioxine purple. And this is one of my favorite purples to use because it is a true purple. It's the sort of purple you just can't mix. And all of these colors would make for some beautiful floral illustrations, but would not be good for landscape necessarily or figurative art unless you're, you're okay with some interesting skin tones that might not be representative. So really it's all about what you wanna paint. I do figurative kid lit comics. You can check out 7 Inch Kara at 7inchkara.com. I've also done watercolor work for Viz and I've done comic work for Lego. So I have a little bit of experience. So sorry about that. My microphone got broken earlier today. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and begin using our synthetic Velvet Touch brushes. And Princeton has a deal with Art Snacks. So they tend to always include Princeton brushes even when there are better brushes on the market. I'm not a fan of synthetics. I find they tend to drip and they don't have enough of a belly and they don't hold water enough, well enough. So I do use synthetics, um, but I do prefer to use natural hair brushes. Now, these colors are just absolutely beautiful. They're very vivid, bright colors. At least, I mean, they are. I Speaking from experience, they are vivid, bright colors. Um, they will dry a little less saturated, but because they are, ooh, I got purple in that green gold. That's a beautiful mix right there, but not what we want when it comes to swatching. And I wonder 
what my experienced watercolorists are thinking as they're watching me swatch these colors. What's going on in your heads? All right, so we're gonna do a water demo with the Plum Chester, and it'll give me a chance to do mass tone opacity swatches. So I'm going to lay down a line of Plum Chester, and I'm gonna let it dry for five minutes. Um, I would usually let my inks dry for 24 hours, that's just my preference, but you should at least let your ink dry for five minutes before you apply water or alcohol marker. All right, so that's been five minutes. I'm going to grab some paint from each dot and kind of do a handy dandy mass tone swatch. In a way, this is nice because I did intend to review my core watercolors and this kind of gives me another resource I can link. And you just saw that drip there. That is the power of synthetics. I also like to really load up my brush with water because I'm used to painting with natural hairs. Oh, just drip all over my paper, why don't you? And this 400 pound paper is starting to buckle a little bit. You guys can only imagine if I did washes and then layers and then wet into wet and then glazes, how much buckling this would have. Okay, so we've got six mass tone swatches and some drippage. We're gonna check in when these have had a chance to dry and see if the color has shifted at all. So this hasn't fully dried, but some of the colors at the top are dry. I think it's probably helpful to show a bit of a color shift. It's not as drastic as I've seen with some brands. And these are pigment-based watercolors, so they are going to be pretty sturdy and you're not gonna get a significant light shift. Um, synthetic doesn't necessarily mean dye-based, it just means synthetically derived and it's usually from the automotive industry. And it does seem like this Plum Chester pigment-based fine liner is indeed waterproof. So we just need to wait for these to dry. So while these are, oh, I just stuck my finger in them. While these are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and experiment a little bit with these paints and with these brushes. And I'm gonna put a dot of each color on this paper. I'm also gonna try to beat the heck out of this paper, really slam it with water while we're doing this. And I have no idea why Art Snacks didn't include some larger brushes like a mop, but they did not. We've got what we've got, so we're gonna play with what we have. really makes me want to do a back box, watercolor box, where I include all my favorite things and all the things I think a beginner would really benefit for. And you guys know brush would be in that box because I love me some brush -o. But you know what? If they're going to do this as an ongoing thing, they've got a year to do it. I just won't be, I just won't be with them. 89 for three months and a late box is just too steep, too rich for my blood. Especially considering I already have quite a collection of watercolor supplies. And I know given that I can be kind of a hard person to please. I am to be fair impressed that they included core watercolors. They are very nice watercolors. I'm just a little miffed by the colors they chose. All right, so let's get out that angled shader. This is a brush. I pretty much never use. Can be really great though for covering larger areas, for doing landscapes, and the shader part, you can really get some nice flexibility in there. And I know I keep saying this, but I feel like this would be a great set for florals, and this would be a great brush maybe for some brush calligraphy. 
mix in. Oh, I love it with the pink though. The green gold with the pink is just super vibrant. Really color bouncy, a lot of contrast, but certainly not colors I would use on their own for figurative painting. Mix in there, a little bit of that cobalt. I'm gonna switch over to the four. Now the eight is supposed to be a long handled brush. I'll grab it in a second, but I didn't think it really had much longer. I mean, it's not that much bigger. How is this a long? Seriously, it's the same length, almost the same length as the four. Now I have some long watercolor brushes. Let me see if I can dig one up. I do. This is a long watercolor brush. This is what they call an eight long. Mmm, not really that long. Somebody would get poor marks for dating. Lying. So this is the dioxine purple, or di yeah, dioxine, I almost said violet, but it's a purple. And it's a nice true purple. It's a very dark, intense purple. It kind of stands on its own. It's not, I mean, you can water it down a lot, all of these colors, um, maybe not the cobalt because there's a lot of um, white in it. It's the most opaque of the colors included. All of these colors have a lot of shading though. There's a lot of range to each individual color. So, you know, you can, I don't want to say, I don't want to lie and be like, you can really use them for a lot because you can't. Um, I mean, you can, but you know, you really have to know your color theory. You have to be willing to experiment with blending and it may be best to blend on the page rather than to blend in your palette. And it just seems like it's a challenging but rewarding set to use, but not a set I would recommend to younger artists. Now this four is kind of small for a four and it's a frustrating little four and it's very drippy. Of the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes that they sent, I think the angled shader is my favorite and I'm making a mess, but I'm also trying to make some nice blends, see what we can get color wise and I'm also trying to really put a lot of water on the paper okay so I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna do a wet over dry with them to see if they pick up um, or if they start ghosting which was something I had noticed with the demonstration piece that Heidi had so kindly made and Heidi had mentioned that the core watercolors do have a tendency to lift when you layer. So I'm going to test for that. So while this isn't fully dry, it is still cool to the touch. It is surface dry. So I'm going to go ahead and I've pretty much run out of my dots over there. So I'm going to need to do some new dots, which it is a very, these are very goopy watercolors. They tend to get really stringy, which is fine. It's not any indication of the quality, just an indication of the mesh you're going to make. And I tried to mix up where I put, ooh, it's a pretty color, but it is lifting, especially with these synthetic brushes. So synthetic brushes tend to be a little stiffer than natural hair brushes. Um, and that stiffness can sometimes scrape or remove pigment off the page. That Quinn magenta seems a lot hotter there. I wonder if it's because it mixed with the yellow and the green gold. And having a chance to kind of just make a mess and play with watercolors can also be a really good way to sort of get to know them better. Not really painting anything in particular, just kind of scrubbing and making a mess, seeing if I can get, wait, okay, that was orange. That's why it was so hot. This is the Quinn magenta. think another part so I think it's a two-part problem with these watercolors lifting and the only way for me to find out is to test on a different paper and with different brushes but I think it's because we're using a cellulose based paper cellulose based papers tend to be very prone to lifting it's a problem I've had in the past with my uh, Canson Montval and we're using synthetic brushes which tend to be very prone to scraping so when I do my full review of the core watercolors I will try to keep that in mind 
and use a cotton rag paper with softer brushes. So people typically go with synthetics because synthetics tend to be very inexpensive and they tend to be kind of ubiquitous, especially Princeton. Princeton is sold everywhere from Jerry's Art of Ramat, Plaza, to Dick Blick, to Michael's, to your mom and pop art supply store. And if you're looking for some very inexpensive starter brushes, I can recommend Princeton Snap. And to be honest, these kind of handle like the Princeton Snap. The real difference is like the coating on the brush handle, which doesn't make them more comfortable, but it does make them less prone to slipping if your hand is wet. So I am going to let this dry and then I'm going to do a spray and lift test. All right, I'm going to do a reactivation test. It's not unusual for watercolors to reactivate, especially ones that haven't been on the paper, you know, super long. Um, so this isn't really any, it doesn't prove anything about the quality one way or the other. It's just helpful information now. So I'm using a regular spray bottle and I'm not going to spray everywhere. I'm going to spray different areas and I'm going to use a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of smooth it over and then lift. So it's not terribly bad in areas where it was sort of caked on. It does lift a bit. That's not surprising, but it does stay pretty firm in other areas. I'm going to use the shader brush with some clean water and I'm just going to go over it and it looks like it is lifting a bit and intermixing. So at least on this Windsor & Newton paper that is something to be aware of. Now I did ha um, hands-on creativity at my local plaza. Plaza is an art supply chain store a chain art supply store here in Nashville, Tennessee. And they had a Winsor & Newton rep and he was talking about Winsor & Newton's paper holdings. And he'd mentioned that a lot of people really don't like this cellulose paper because it has internal and external sizing. And some people find that the external sizing makes it sort of gummy. So I thought, oh, and also makes it very prone to lifting. So I thought it was kind of an interesting choice that Art Snacks included this cellulose paper when Windsor & Newton has a cotton rag paper that's supposed to fix the problems this cellulose paper had. Now, I've used this cellulose paper before in videos here on this channel, and I don't mind it. I really like it for floral paintings, in fact, but I don't really care for it for figurative paintings. And I do know, I do see what people are talking about when they say it's got kind of a waxy finish. So I think it was an odd choice. Now, before I say goodbye, I want to talk about dupes with you guys, or rather what I would suggest over the included materials.